Welcome to my airboat build video number three. In this video I'm going to install the UHMW. This is the Poly. The way I put it on was an unorthodox way but uh, it worked well and I think it's interesting. So what is UHMW? It's ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Otherwise known as Poly. Some people call it Teflon but uh, it certainly is not PTFE. It has a low water absorption, a low coefficient of friction. It's relatively slippery, a high abrasion resistance, and a high impact resistance. It's a very tough material. These properties make UHMW very good for protection. It's commonly used for dump truck boxes, jet boats, and airboats, and they're using it on the bottom of the boat so they can do crazy things like driving over gravel and rocks. For my boat, I don't plan on ever intentionally jumping it, but I do plan on running dry, so I want this poly for protection for the hull. As I showed in a previous video, I bought this poly as a single large piece as a roll, and then after unrolling it, I did have to let it sit for a while to get the memory out. So I've never installed this poly before, but uh, what I've read from forums and from the internet, the typical way that it's put on is the boat is flipped upside down, the poly is laid out over top, preferably this is done during a hot summer day, which uh, makes the material a bit more pliable, and then it's either riveted or screwed to the hull. And pictured on this photo I found on the internet is the way it's typically done, where the bottom and the sides are done as separate pieces. So even though I've never done this before, I thought about it for a while and I decided I wanted to do it a different way. The way I was going to do it is I was going to keep the boat right side up and I was going to lift the poly up to the underside of the hull. I also wanted to do it all with a single piece uh, for both the bottom and the sides and this would mean bending the poly around the chines. There's two main advantages of doing it this way. The first is that I don't have to flip the boat upside down. Previously when I had a flip the beginning portion of the hull, I found it very difficult. I just don't have the means to be able to flip the hull, especially now that it's more of a complete structure. The second advantage, which I think is significant, is that the poly will be one entire piece. There'll be no seams on the sides, there'll be no potential area for water to catch an edge, or for, say, a rock to tear an edge. So I think uh, from a structural point of view, uh, there's an advantage to having it as one piece. So the system I used is that I suspended the entire boat hull from the ceiling. I used jacks and blocks and straps to lift the poly up to the hull. This is a two-person job. One person would drill about one square foot of holes from the top. The person below would place the rivet through and uh, use a rivet gun from below. The person on top would have a bucking bar at the top and then we would proceed to place all the rivets. The riveting is all solid aluminum rivets. For the rivet gun I used this one from Eastwood. Initially it worked pretty well but after a while the trigger became unreliable. It would be either full on or full off and it's hard to modulate. So I actually switched over to using a cheap Chinese air hammer and that worked quite a bit better actually. For the rivet set I bought a cheap set off eBay the one I used for this was the, uh, the flush one on the far right. The rivets I used are a 1100F aluminum, 3 16th in size with a 78 degree countersunk head, and 1 inch in length worked out well for this application. From this source the rivets were about 50 bucks for a thousand rivets, and I used about 1500 total to rivet the poly. For the bucking bar, I bought a cheap sledgehammer from Princess Auto. I cut off one of the rounded ends and ground it down until it was completely smooth and polished it to a mirror finish. This worked really well for the person doing the bucking. The, the heavy weight of this did most of the work. Here we see the hull of the boat is actually suspended and I'm using a jack and jack stands and those straps to lift the poly up to the bottom of the hull. The stringers formed a bit of a grid. In each of these grid we put 12 rivets and each of these 12 rivets would be performed at the same time. You can see from the bottom here the countersunk heads of the rivets is flush with the bottom of the poly. 
So we started riveting at the stern, worked our way to the bow, riveting the entire bottom of the boat first. This worked really well. It was a really labor intensive process. I'm not sure how many hours it took, but it was a lot and it was a lot of hard work. Since I was doing this in my garage over the winter, I did have to make the garage as warmed up pretty warm. I did have to use uh, heaters to make sure the poly was warm enough to be pliable. But we had a really nice result. The entire bottom of the poly was completely smooth, no wrinkles, no areas of separation. Everything was completely flat to the hull. Once the bottom was completely done, I made slices in the sides to function essentially as pie cuts and then use the clamps to bring the sides up the curve of the bow. For the sides on the main part of the hull, I used uh, scrap steel to bolt to the edges of the poly and then I used these cargo straps to winch the poly up to the hull. And this worked pretty well. It did take quite a lot of straps and quite a lot of force to bring the poly up. I also had to use a lot of heat. Not pictured here, but I was using a propane powered Tiger Torch to heat up the poly. When it was uh, soft and pliable, I would winch up on the straps. And repeating this, I was able to get it all the way to uh, approximate to the hull. Once I had the poly completely touching the sides of the hull, I fixed it permanently with rivets and worked my way down. This technique worked really well. I was able to fully wrap the poly around the chine and the sides and had full contact the entire way. And pictured here you see where the flat part meets the uh, pie cuts from the radius of the bow. At the curve there, each of those pie cuts is firmly fixed to the hull. However, there is a bit of a gap, say about a quarter of an inch between each of those. Because the pieces are so firmly fixed, I don't think there'd be any consequence of leaving that gap there. But since my original goal was to have one solid piece with no seams, I would like to try to fill those gaps. My plan is to try using a plastic welder and to basically weld in a piece of poly to fill those gaps. If that doesn't work, I'll probably just fill them with urethane. So except for filling the gaps at the front, the poly is now fully done. Overall I'm very happy with how it looks. It's very securely fixed to the hull, there's no wrinkles, no gaps, it's very very sturdy. As I mentioned, I do plan on driving over rocks and gravel and I have no intention of taking it easy on this. However, I do hope it lasts a long time, mostly because this was so much work to put on and I have no desire to do it again in the near future. Coming up next, I've made some aerofoil type rudders. I'll show those in an upcoming video. After that, we'll get into the rigging and the motor mounts, putting the engine in place, eventually getting it connected to an EFI and tuning, and all the other things required to finish this boat. So, there's lots more to come. Thanks for watching.